For anyone used to working on desktop, you are likely to be familiar with keyboard modifiers. Affinity Designer for iPad also has access to keyboard modifiers with the feature called the Command Controller. It works with tools and the Layers panel. You can toggle the Command Controller on or off by opening the Document menu in the top left and tapping Toggle Command Controller. If I tap the Center button, we can see the four modifier options. You can hold the button and drag it over each modifier to temporarily enable it. If you'd like it to stay engaged without needing to hold it, you can drag the center button past the modifier until it turns blue. Now it will remain locked until you tap it to release it or change to a different tool. You can also tap the modifiers to lock them on or off. Now for this project, I want to fill some of the spaces of my floral pattern. So I'll tap this flower to select it with the move tool and hold the command modifier on. Now I can drag to create a duplicate flower and release it in a space, and then release the command modifier. Alternatively, I can tap to lock on the command modifier, and then move the selected object to create a duplicate, and then tap the command modifier again to disable it. I'll rotate it to make sure it fits the space by dragging the rotation handle, and I can hold shift to lock the rotation to 15 degree increments. Next, I'd like to change the plants with outlines to fit the style of the ferns. I'll tap the fern to select it, and if I double tap on the command controller, I can access the quick menu and choose copy. Now, just like on desktop, I can hold shift and tap each plant to select multiple objects. I'll double tap on the command controller again and choose paste style. Now the plants have no stroke and the fill matches the ferns. The command controller modifiers work with the layers panel too. I can lock option on and tap a layer to solo it. Then I can tap it again with the modifier still active to return to my document. And I can tap the modifier to disable it again. I can also hold shift to select multiple layers at once. These white flowers are a little too small, so I'll select all of the curves on the layers panel. I'll open the group and tap the first layer and scroll to the last layer, then hold shift and tap the last layer. If I resize like this, the flowers will move from their positions. So I'll open the menu and enable transform separately. If I do this without any modifiers, the scaling is not aspect correct and the origin point is not central. So I'll need to use multiple modifiers at the same time. I'll swipe the command controller button past shift to lock it on and keep the flowers aspect correct. I'll also lock Command on to resize around the center of each flower. Now the flowers stay in position. However, some of the flowers are touching, so I'll enable Control to freely rotate the objects. When I'm finished, I can switch to another tool or press Deselect to reset the modifiers. By locking and holding more than one keyboard modifier, several steps can be performed in one action. This is great for time saving and efficiency. One last thing to mention is that you can move the command controller's location on the document view. To do this, perform a long press on the center button until it starts pulsing, and then drag with your finger to a new location. So that was a quick look at how the command controller could help streamline your iPad workflows. Thanks for watching.